Now I'm not reading the books that I um, wanted to discuss in like any particular order this month. Um, the m books that I took off my TBR, I had actually kind of grouped them in twos and I had thought that perhaps I would read them back to back um, within those groups, but then I thought actually maybe I just want to read when I, want the, when, when I fancy reading them. So I haven't been doing that, but actually with the first two books it worked pretty well how it turned out. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go over the two books that I've read, give a brief review and then talk about them together. And the first book that I did read was 100 Shadows by Huang Jin En. Now this book um, was quite different to what I was actually expecting it to be um, and it was kind of quite forgettable, it wasn't very memorable in any way. Um, I didn't really feel that it brought anything to the table in regards to um, producing a kind of good quality book that you might have seen before but still is good with itself or it didn't bring anything new um, or exciting. Um, it was just kind of a bit of an empty book if that kind of makes sense. The book itself follows this character called Ungyo I think and um, she works in this sort of electrical department, I think she does repairs and then there was a bit of confusion at the start as to whether this love interest who is Muje also works in the same shop, or I think he works in a different shop in the same building, um, but it was a bit weird how these two were connected um, and I don't think it made all that much sense, but anyway it's about these two whose relationship is kind of blossoming but it has already blossomed and it doesn't really, it's quite stagnant in this book, it doesn't really progress in any way um, and the, the quirkiness of the way this relationship sort of pans out is a bit odd. So it's a story about their two relationship and throughout the story there's these references to these shadows coming to life and it's always um, haunted by this message of not to follow the shadows and throughout the story we meet um, various different characters and each character sort of tells a story about um, somebody they knew or somebody themselves in their own experience how they've had this sort of um, run-in with a shadow that has risen um, and so the shadows are kind of like a haunting figure throughout this book because we are introduced to it quite early on and then the motif of these shadows becomes more and more um, talked about and more and more discussed as the book progresses until the end when but the ending doesn't really do anything <laughs> it kind of just stops and that's that I was quite disappointed in the fact that I just didn't ever feel connected to any of the characters the writing wasn't particularly like quirky in any way it was just quite bland and empty and it was just to the point and ultimately it didn't go anywhere. I think that was the biggest issue is that it didn't go anywhere but none of the characters were ever developed. Um, it was just somebody had put a piece of pen to paper and kind of just decided to write which is funny because in terms of surrealism that auto writing is something that the surrealists did practice or did you know want to kind of create artwork by you know delving into the subconscious to create something that had no conscious control over. Um, but in this case, I think it was quite contrived. And I think it was trying to be something. You could almost get a glimmer of what this book wanted to be, but just wasn't. And um, I think in terms of sort of the East Asian literary canon, which I think is growing um, quite fast at the moment, like in more recent times, you can see wh where this author kind of fits into that and how this author is perhaps inspired by that but she just doesn't quite have the skill to actually fully immerse herself into what she wanted to write and I fa found that just quite disappointing and I probably wouldn't be interested in reading so much more from her again. Um, so that's kind of what this book was about and yeah I just it fell flat for me. I gave it three stars because at least I could I wasn't frustrated with it, I wasn't angry with it, I just kind of felt a bit meh. And then I read Leonora Carrington's The Hearing Trumpet. Now this book, um, also very different to what I was actually expecting going in, um, but this book worked out much better for me as a reader at least than um, 100 Shadows did. This book follows our main character Marion, who I, th I think she's in Mexico but I'm not actually 100% sure because I think I spent the first half of the book thinking she was in Spain 
Um, and then, but then she kept on talking about being in the Americas, but definitely not in the US. So I assumed it was Mexico. Um, however, she's living with uh, her son, who she doesn't really like, and his wife and their son, I think. She gets a hearing trumpet from a friend and she hears that these people, her family, want to incarcerate her in a sort of women's asylum um, to look after her in her old age, but also to kind of play the game that she is seen out and therefore she needs to be out of the house and be in a place where these doctors will look after her. So then she gets put into this institute and she, with her friend who's on the outside, um, starts to initiate a plan to escape. But as these plans are kind of being organised, she uncovers further secrets of this sort of place where she's being kept. And um, it kind of turns into almost a bit like a thriller or a mystery that she has to solve. Um, and it was just a bit quirky. It gets weirder and weirder as it goes on. Um, in regards to the surrealist nature of this book, I was actually expecting more. There are some really nice elements to it um, in the way that Carrington structures her sentences, which do feel very surrealist. So for example, there is this one sentence that says, I detected a new sound quite near and strangely reminiscent of mince pies, which kind of alters with this whole um, relating a sound to a food, which you would either think would be a smell or a taste. Um, so it kind of disrupts that sentence in a way that's um, casting a new sort of meaning to it um, or in fact a dismeaning or unmeaning of it. Um, it kind of like unravels the sentence um, in a way that you wouldn't expect it to. So things like that. Um, there are a few sentences which kind of end in a way that um, debunks where you think the sentence might be going, uh, which is always really interesting to read. But from the surrealist perspective, it actually isn't all that surreal, I guess, until the end. I think the story itself kind of perhaps has a more surreal structure in the way that it kind of unravels and that the second half is in juxtaposition to the first half, creating this whole new experience. But um, throughout, it didn't wholly feel like a surreal text. Both of these books, um, where they didn't have that sort of surre surreality that I thought they might have, um, I would actually kind of define them both almost as a little bit as speculative fiction in that they are creating these environments which kind of feel contemporary to some extent but also feel quite futuristic and quite dystopic. In The Hearing Trumpet, this sort of um, speculative fiction looks at this global crisis in which the earth it becomes tilted on its axis and the um, and the poles sort of move places so that the equator is no longer the centre and the, that's where the um, ice caps become. And, and this kind of sense of this end of the world disaster is hinted at throughout the book but that you don't really kind of get a sense of it being something that is going to happen and then it happens and you're in this situation where you're like whoa geez it's, and then it's just about these women who are adapting to it and it kind of felt a bit like this sort of feminist counter apocalypse which um i went to see a talk about in malmo one time and it was very interesting and that the the woman who was talking about it um came up with this theory about how even in the apocalypse or even in the science of progression in future it's so very male oriented um in that like the shapes and the the goals and everything it's all about the man as opposed to the woman so this book in part actually felt a lot like it was part of that conversation even though this book obviously came quite quite a few years before and it was really interesting to find that link so that made it feel quite contemporary to today's time because of the the meanings and the under underlying themes of it. There are a lot of like religious sort of motives I guess and that kind of creates this new thread of um, this new thread of meaning which I wasn't expecting but that makes sense I think in the context of Leonora Carrington's life. Um, whereas this one, this is also kind of feeling like it's set in some sort of near future perhaps in which there are these um, electronic markets and there are these sort of um, ways of adapting to a more electronic life um, but that there is a price to pay for that and there are there are new struggles and the, the shadows are representative of 
kind of something else. But I will also argue that I don't think the meaning of the shadows was very strong and I think it was just a bit too woolly and didn't quite, you know, give it that punch that it could have. So it was interesting that both these books kind of didn't fulfil what I was expecting them to, but brought something new to the table and it kind of brings into discussion where um, SFF and where sort of surrealism, magical realism fits into this sort of line of speculative fiction and, and what breadth does speculative fiction cover, um, especially in light of some perhaps more mainstream general fiction authors who want to dabble in the SFF side but you know don't particularly want to be cast as an SFF writer so then you get speculative from that. Um, which I think creates an uh, interesting discussion on what, how we deem genre fiction um, because I wouldn't say that either of these books are genre fiction yet they are both speculative to an extent so there is a fine line and I think you know the more that we create boundaries within literature the, the more difficult it becomes to actually progress as a literary movement um, so they're the first two books anyway that I read and I hope that that made some sort of sense in the in in this sort of review of those um, I've just started reading Mood Indigo I'm already a few chapters in so hopefully soon there'll be another video of reviewing the next two books that I read I'll see you next time bye bye